So what's happening? Well, um, the leadership group and Donald May talked about the process. Essentially, we've um, suspended Magic from the uh, club in terms of um, being around the club and at the club other than for rehabilitation purposes indefinitely. Um, he's breached um, rehabilitation protocols and internal codes. Um, and as a result of those breaches, which we're not going to go into, um, for very good reason, I would have thought, um, he's accepted uh, uh, the penalty. And uh, as a result of that, he has to now... Um, work his way back in. He'll continue to do community work, he'll continue to do a lot of the other things that are required of him as a professional footballer, but in terms of um, being around the club and training with the boys, um, he's been suspended in So it's not one incident, you say breaches? We're not going to go into He mentioned rehabilitation and also maintaining um, the standard of our culture internally. Um, so we're not going to go into the specifics. And we've got to respect that, Jack. He's a young man under a lot of pressure and therefore from that point of view, um, to go into the details of um, the reasons behind this would be unfair to him, and, um, and we're not really, we don't believe that. What's been his reaction to this? He's accepted. Um, Donald's been dealing with um, Madge. Um, he understands it, um, and uh, he'll accept it. What's what about transparency, though? Uh, I mean, surely if you just said that he's done this or done that, it would be done and dealt with rather than leaving it open to condition? We've said, we've stated our position. I know it might be frustrating, but um, we have to, as a club, respect our internal processes, and... Uh, we're not going to go into the details. And you know, he understands it. That's a critical thing. We told our members and supporters we hold high standards. He hasn't met those in those two uh, in those two areas, and therefore um, he'll learn and um, be a better player. Has, be it, a better has, has it affected his um, uh, uh, rehab? Uh, has this pushed his return back? Because of what he's Again, we mentioned that it's a breach of rehabilitation. But does that mean he, he might he's obviously not recover from the knee injuries quickly now? We're not I'll hand over to Donald on the specifics of that. No, there's no, um, I mean, Madge will, uh, the, the reality of the situation is that uh, the leadership group met with Madge this morning. You know, it's only a newly formed leadership group. And, uh, you know, Andrew Swallow heard up the discussion and, um, yeah, Madge is just going to go and train at Werribee, indefinitely. So, uh, and that'll mean that, you know, we won't be like, taking any shortcuts on his football progress. And she, Still needs to focus on. He's still only a developmental player, and um, all of his re rehab stuff will be overseen by Steve Saunders at the club. How disappointed is the club? Well, look, sure, the club's disappointed, but I mean, it's the bigger picture. I mean, all of our blokes are, um, come under a, um, a code of conduct, and the leadership group has has worked really um, closely with the playing group over um, and with Brad over this pre-season, dating back to Utah and. There's certain standards that they're putting around training and adherence to the way they want to go about things, and um, you know, whether it was Madge or whether it was any other player, you know, yeah. they all fall under the same rules. If you get more attention on a bloke that hasn't played, you know, he's had a lot of publicity but hasn't played one game. Look, the thing about it is not so matter whether he's played another uh, how many games he's played. I suppose in his instance, probably a lack of experience, you know. Might, uh, a guy that might have been um, a little bit more experienced might have um, been a little bit sharper in a few of uh, the areas that you just spoken about, but um, yeah, that's 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 not easy. Is that alcohol related? No, we're not gonna, we're not going to go into the, the details of it. All we want to say is that um, as you just spoken about, you know, he, he, he breached some Rio protocols, and the leadership group are very strong on instilling a culture that um, you know blokes like. Arch, Anthony Stevens, these sort of players have handed on to the younger generation, and you know that that's where it's all at. You know, I mean, um, a very tight knit footy club down over the street, and uh, yeah, so it continues to be that way. As I said, mate, we'll just leave it there. So, what are the conditions for him to lift the? Because it's an indefinite ban. So, what does he have to do to have the ban? He just has to satisfy the leadership group that he's he's on the right track and he understands where they're coming from. How's his behaviour? No, as I said, um, whatever's occurred you know, is between the leadership group and our playing group and our coaching staff, so you know, we're really comfortable with that. So just, just to clear up, what is the culmination of? No, well, I don't know. <laughs> we just, yeah, as I said, mate, the um, um, leadership group have, have, have dealt with the situation. Just to clear up, is his recovery and rehab, will that be done at Werribee or can he will still have access to the doctors no, in North the, Melbourne? the um, majority of his work will be from a skill-based component of his program will be at Werribee. Yep. And all his 
rehabilitation and medical um, commitments will be overseen by Steve Saunders. Would you say it's out of character for no judge? Um, well, I just think that, um, as we've said before, he's a, he's a young bloke, and as you said, he's had an enormous amount of pressure put on him, and some high expectations within the community, and uh, you know, like he's a North Melbourne boy, and we'll support him 100%. We'll leave it there, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.